Thanks for joining me on my channel. We've got a little bit of oak work to do and I absolutely love doing oak work. It's green oak work, which is basically a tree like this, a mighty oak that's been felled for all kinds of reasons, just forestry or the fact that it's just beyond its sell by date. And it's been machined up to the sections that I've sent off for. And now what we're gonna do is join it all together and make a support for part of the roof here on the big build. I'm just sitting on a bit of nice bit of oak here. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing, the stuff that you can produce. One of the most versatile materials in the world. It always has been, and it always will be. So this is where the oak post and the canopy go. So basically, up here on my rim board, there's a pocket which is marked, which is effectively where the oak beam sails in, and it's in the center of this bit of pier here. And that is at wall plate level at the top there. And that's where our rafters will pitch down and form this extended gable, which gives us that nice extra space in the existing roof space. So what we've got is we've got some granite stones here, which are basically going to be supporting it. Before we cut these into this freshly laid paving, what we did was we excavated two pad foundations. They were a metre deep, mass filled with concrete, back up to this what used to be an oversight here and we're going to now set these out with the rod. We'll transfer the rod to the oak frame for the centres, so it's no measuring once we've marked them. We've done all the measuring here. This bit of ply represents these stones here, plus a mortar joint. So where we cut them out, for example, we've cut this one out here over the existing foundation that runs through here. These ones here now, we're going to cut in situ, so we'll remove them there. We put our plywood here, we score around that. This is where we're gonna cut out. They'll then get bedded down onto the concrete foundation underneath there, nice and level and pointed in. So that one and that one. That can all be happening while we go and make the frame up outside. So the frame consists of a head beam, three posts and a return. So what I'm doing here is creating this simple rod. I know that's the wall end over there. Put a big arrow on there and I'll write wall on there. I just need to allow for my bearing, which is basically going to hit the rim board. I'll let it go through the rim board so we can attach it all together. And then it will be built up off of this piece of block work there as we get the concrete blocks through there. So I've marked my little square here. That's the center of my post. I'll do the same here. I'll bang that on there. And that's the center of my post. And of course, the end. See, that one's cut to size. And there's my rod. So here's the basic frame. We've got the head or the wall plate, if you like, what the roof cuts down onto it. We've got a series of posts and we've got a series of braces. Now these have been sent out from the mill. It's my job now to make the, select the face sides, the face edges, a little bit like normal joinery and get it all jointed together, set out and jointed together, which includes mortising, uh, creating mortise and tenons for the tops, the legs and these braces, cutting them to exactly the right length. So. So here's the rod. Basically, I'll just keep using this all the way through this. I've got the wall marks on one end. So when I lay it onto the top of the beam, I can then transfer the centers and that's all the setting out done. There's no more setting out to do. So I do think that if you were doing it by the measure, writing them down, there's too many opportunities to get those measurements wrong, write them wrong, transfer them wrong. 
by using that bit of wood and marking the actual centres, you just can't go wrong. So it's a little bit of advice because we're all human beings and we do make mistakes. I've made plenty of mistakes before and um, it's only from those mistakes that you learn. Anyway, we're going to get on and start the process of joining this together. So for me, the very first job will be sorting out which sides are the faces, so which sides are we going to see as you walk up something that's in direct sunlight, for example, so it's going to show up any defects. And also, you know, oak's a natural material. You sometimes find you get something that's been clouted as it's come off the truck or whatever. So we want to make sure that we've got the best sides out. The other thing is that the tolerances, so if, I, if these are 150 square, or they should be 150 square, quite often when you measure it, it's not exactly 150 square, I've got like 153, 150, but it's really close. It's certainly not worth worrying about. So it's not regularized. So what I'm going to do first, I'm not going to take anything off the lengths. I always like to leave as much on as possible. In case we make an error, we've got to adjust the tenon, for example, or we cut into it, we find we, something we don't like in there. So I'm going to cut the very ends dead square. And to do that, I'm going to make a simple shoulder box. I just slide it straight down. I put a clamp on it and I just run my circular saw straight the way round and it's perfectly square and true. I haven't had to put pencil marks around it and all the rest of it. I'll also use that, I'll slide that further down and use that to form the shoulders of the tenon as well. So they're all exactly in line instead of drawing it round with a square because even though I use a framing square of course, you can put a square on this side, on your face side and mark across you can turn it through there and mark across and follow that process. And sometimes, if you've done this before, you'll notice that they don't often join up. And that's because there are irregularities in the timber. So all I'll do is I'll make a simple OSB box. I'll slot that over. One leg will be longer, I'll clamp that on, and I'll just spin it and just run my circular saw around, and that'll keep everything flat, dead flat on plane and square. So I'll make that up now. So I want to make it 153 square effectively. So there we go. So what I'm doing is I'm just making the sides, obviously they need to be two thicknesses of OSB. So I just stack them together in here, instead of adding them up, give myself a mark. That's the top and the bottom, I'm making that out of 12 mil. These are out of three quarter inch or 18 mil. And what I'm gonna do now is just make that out of 12 mil. Then I can just put a, a small screw through them and that comes up at 192. So you say it's not, you know, we're not, making clocks here. Got a nice straight edge on that bit of board, which is what we want.
basically that is a very simple flat square shoulder box. I'm just going to slide this along, pop a clamp on and run my saw against it, just like you see me do when I'm using a square and I run the side of the circular saw. Now all that means is it took me 10 or 15 minutes to make this up, but it means that I haven't got to do any other marking apart from clamp something on and run a circular saw around. And I know it's going to be nice and true and nice and square. I can also use it for marking shoulders all the way around as well, because I know when I look across the top of this, it's super flat and super square. I've made it slightly bigger than the widest measurement of the post. I, I measured them at about 153, I've made it 154. So hopefully we can just slide on, keep one side nice and tight, clamp it on and it will work on any of the posts. <clears throat> there we go. So, now's the point where we sort them all out into the right order and mark them up. One of the most useful devices when I'm doing any kind of post and beam sort of oak work like this is I have myself a very small, it's almost like a post box there. And all that represents is my tenon and my mortise. Now, because the posts are irregular, I'm working from the face side all the time and I'm working from the center. So for example, if this beam's 150 by 153 or 155, and I want to keep the faces all the same, all nice and tight. And obviously, I would use this on the face. I'd keep it centrally of the beam, and I would just put a mark on here for reference, okay? That is exactly where my tenon wants to be. I'll cut the shoulders, then I'll cut through there and finish off the tenon so it's perfectly in position, so the face sides are nice and flat. Then I'll use the same device to where I'm going to mark the mortises, again off the face side, so you'll see that there's the center line here. There's my center line taken from our rod here, which is what we mark the whole job up with. I keep it flush with the face side, which is this side, push it up there, and then I just draw out this letter box. Now, basically that's a 50 millimeter mortise, which is roughly a third of the width of this beam but we'll always keep everything off the face side. At least then when you put the stuff together and you push the mortise in, it's gonna be absolutely perfect. Now we're gonna use a mortise machine on this. The mortise machine, once I've set it up, will always cut this shoulder exactly where I want it, no matter where I position it along the beam. And the back face is obviously adjusted. There's an adjustment on it, I'll show you that in a bit. And that'll give me the exact mortise that I'm looking for. So these would be for the posts. That would be a post. I'll mark this one here. A bit more tricky. I'll mark this one here. So there's my center line of my post. This is my face side. This is the edge I keep flat. I just put that on there. And it's reference, okay? Now, imagine this is the post. You'll see that my tenon has shoulders all the way around. And the reason I like to do that is because as the posts shrink and distort, you don't then look straight up into the mortise. If you're underneath, you don't look straight up into the mortise because the edge of the post is effectively here and here. So we'll have a shoulder all the way around and our mortise will be here. And also with a chain mortiser, sometimes you can either score the returning out shoulder and it doesn't break out. But if you're not careful, that might break out. And if you've got a bare face tenon, so if your tenon runs right the way through, 
you might see a bit of chipping out. And I know it's only green oak work and the rest of it, but it's still nice to make it as perfect as possible. It doesn't take any longer. So there you go. That'll be my mortise there. That'll match with the tenon. I know that's what we're working to. It's 50 millimeters, which is, let me get my chisel here. And the reason why we want to make it fit the chisel is so we can clean out the actual mortises as well. So we, you know, we can, we can actually get that in and clean them out should we need to. All right, so that's, that's the idea of that. So sometimes when I'm doing oak framing, I might get 20 mortises to do and 20 tenons to do. So by having this little square device for running a saw against, keeping all of my shoulders, everything nice and square, I can also then use this for the tenon. So this little post box off the face side in the middle flush there is going to give me exactly my tenon. So if I just scrub that through here, that gives me my tenon. This is what we're taking off here. This one is set to the full depth of that saw, so close on four inches for the tenon that goes into the head beam, so it's a stub tenon. We're also taking off some of the shoulders, so we've got a shoulder all the way around, so you don't look up into those mortises effectively. So what I've got first is I've set everything up. So I've got a little mark here, which is 35 mil back. I then hold, that's effectively there, which is the same width from there to the side. Effectively, that would be flush. So that's my start point. And then I've got what you see here is a little groove on the side of my box. And that is the mortise depth. So now when I slide this along to there and clamp it on, when I use my saw with that 35, it gives me my mortise length. I'll just clamp that on. I hope you can follow this. It's a little bit on the, on the tricky side. I could show you 10 times and you probably still wouldn't get it. It's, you know, it's one of those weird things. So I'll just clamp that on here. Now this will stay clamped in the same position. That's it. Now we start by cutting through for this shoulder here, down to there. That's what the blade is set for at the moment. If I just bring that round here, it's set just about to that, just a tiny bit beyond. So we'll put that one through first. Everything's nice and true. Spin it over, cut the opposite side at that depth. I'll carefully rock it over. And I'll cut the opposite side at that depth. And now I want to just do the return shoulders and I've got a reference on the saw, you can use the scale if you like, but I've got a reference on the saw here. So I'm going to pull that round until we're happy. Now I'll cut those. So now we're obviously cutting to that depth. Same on the other side. And then we can get him out of the way. Don't need him for a minute. Push him back out of the way. And now what we're going to do, let's get my square. We are going to, using the larger saw, we're going to basically take these shoulders out now to keep the tenon in the middle. I'll just run those right through here. And here. So now we're going to remove this. So if you want a reference down the face, you can do that too. So that's what's coming out this time. A little bit more interesting using a saw like this, so I'll start by taking off 
this one, and then I'll go for that one. Clean those out. Finish those with a chisel, tidy them up. And then we just got the simple return shoulders to do. So these are here. Again with the big saw. and you end up with a nice, a nice tenon. Super accurate and super quick. And the last thing I'd be doing would be just easing these corners just to make it go together nicely. Taking a little bit of fat off of them. And that's the basis of the mortise and tenon joint that we make on site.